Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Josh Doyle Invest. Um, this episode today or this uh, video is going to be about a the num me breaking down the numbers on a duplex conversion. I, this property just got sent to me about 30 minutes ago. The realtor says that it's a great deal. I'm actually gonna go look at the property in about an hour and a half. So I wanted to sit down, crunch the numbers and see if this is even worth me going to look at. I figured why not record the process of me just doing my due diligence on this, at least crunching the numbers and showing you my thought process. Uh, so you can kind of see um, how I analyze these deals and let's see if it's a good deal together. Instead of me just already presenting you a deal that I've already seen, let's go through it. Let's find out what this is all about. If you guys like this style of video or um, you know appreciate me putting this out so you guys can learn how to properly analyze deals, do me a favor, guys, and smash that like button nice and early for me. It really helps me get this video to other investors and other people that are trying to learn about uh, real estate investing. So please do me the favor. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, of course, subscribe to the channel, guys. So I'm gonna shrink myself down here so you can see me in the corner and let's get right into it. So this is the deal that got sent to me guys. This is in Hamilton, Ontario. Uh, as you can see, it's listed for $370,000. We'll just round up the hundred bucks. They are holding offers on this deal. So, you know, it's gonna go over 370, but they said that they're accepting preemptive, preemptive offers, which means that basically, hey, we're holding offers until this date or this time but if you wanted to try your offer, if you think it's so strong that we'll take it, we're, we're open to looking at it. So I love when they do that, when they're holding offers, gives me an opportunity to go in there and possibly steal it before other people do. So anyways, um, this is it. It is a bungalow, super easy conversion on this stuff, guys. I can see right here, this is side door entrance. Um, I guess we'll just fly through the pictures real quick together and then we'll jump right into the numbers. So bungalow, single car driveway with a detached garage in the back, that's great. Three bedroom, two bathroom upstairs, also great. Uh, block foundation, that's fine. Usually I'm dealing with properties much older than this with stone foundations. Okay, it's got air conditioning, which is great. Gas meters at the back of the house, a little bit weird, but doesn't change anything. Uh, detached garage with a man door on the side. Looks like the garage is made out of uh, block concrete, which is also pretty cool. Um, okay, we just got a picture of the front porch. Can't tell how old the windows are, but they look like they're vinyl windows, which is a bonus as well. I'll have to check the age when I go there. Okay, so we got carpet, brown trim. So far, this looks like a perfect candidate for um, cosmetic renovation. Go in there, change the light fixture, change the trim, change the floors, paint it. Okay, original kitchen, looking good guys. I would possibly maybe get rid of the appliances and who knows, maybe a new countertop, paint the cabinets. You might be able to get away with just doing this one, nice, easy, cheap cosmetic renovation. Um, once again, floors, paint, trim, doors, redo the bathroom. Maybe keep that floor because that floor is kind of trendy and uh, pretty cool color. Um, anyways, to each their own, it's just cosmetic finishes. Good size bedrooms. Here's the side door entrance, guys, where you would create the separation. Um, I have already looked through these photos, so I'm kind of one step ahead of you guys, but there is a kitchen down here, which is fantastic. That saves you money on plumbing. Um, so yeah, that's great maybe redo the kitchen. You might get away with just being able to paint it depending on the condition of them, changing the hardware, change the countertop, new backsplash, just freshen it up, make it look good. Looks like there's a lot of room down here, which is fantastic. Like I said, three bedrooms upstairs, uh, two bathrooms, which is fantastic. Here's the other bathroom that they're talking about in the basement, which is great. I would give this a cosmetic renovation. Um, one of the bedrooms, the windows look like they're in, you know, that they're a good size. I'd have to measure them to verify that they're legal, but they look pretty good. Ceiling height is obviously, it looks great down here. Gas furnace, washer dryer, uh, looks great. Looks high and dry, which is what you want to see in a basement, right? 
And then we got the floor plan here. So what I'm thinking is that there's a three bed, two bath upstairs and we come downstairs and possibly do a two bed, one bath, um, just because you have the extra room for the laundry and furnace here that eats into your square footage. So you're not really able to mimic the upstairs floor plan. Most times you're not able to, um, yeah, anyways. So let's jump into the numbers. So it's listed for 370,000. I'm gonna move forward under the assumptions that we don't get it for 370 and we have to bid more. So let's assume that we're gonna get it for 400,000, okay? Let's run our numbers at that. On a 30 year mortgage at 2% interest rate, this is what I do guys. I come and find out my, my mortgage payment monthly. That's 1477. So what we'll do is we'll hop over to our duplex conversion spreadsheet and I have here purchase price. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger for you guys. Okay. Purchase price, 400,000. I've already input that there. The mortgage amount is, well, 80% loan to value. So that is 80% of the 400,000. We have $320,000 mortgage at the 30 year amortization. I put 2.5% interest rate. Let's change that. Okay, so our monthly mortgage payment is 1578. Make sure I got that correct. Yeah, 1578. Um, let's see, estimated renovation costs. I'm gonna put 75,000 guys because I think that I think I can get away with that. Um, since it's just cosmetic, it might even be cheaper than that, to be honest, since there's always the, already the kitchen in the basement. Uh, the down payment amount is $80,000. The closing costs, I'm gonna estimate about 7,500. That's lawyers, um, land transfer tax, and that's pretty much it. Anything else, I'll throw that in there. Um, holding costs, I'm gonna assume that a renovation like that, I can easily have that done in six months. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna take out my calculator here, and I'm gonna take six months of the mortgage payment which is 1578, I'll times that by six. That's 9468, right? So 9468, we also need to add in property tax. Let's just go find out the property tax right now. Let's see if it's on here. Property tax is 28, okay. Divide that by 12, is $234 a month. So where is my property tax on here? Right here, two, we'll just bump it up to 235. Um, so if we know that our property tax is 235 and our monthly mortgage payment is 1578, that equals 1813 a month. Um, and now we also obviously have some utilities that we need to add in there as well. Let's just bump it up to two grand a month. Definitely won't exceed two grand. So $2,000 a month times six months of vacancy is $12,000. That's how I'm gonna calculate my holding costs here. So 12,000 bucks. Now, obviously, if I were borrowing money for the renovations, that would also go into my holding costs, whatever I'm paying my private lenders. Um, this, I'm going to run as me presenting this to a joint venture partner where we go 50-50 on the deal and um, meaning that the joint venture partner brings 100% of the capital, I do all the work, and then we split the deal 50-50, so no money's gonna be borrowed. So I'm, I'm just gonna factor in $12,000 for holding costs. Anyway, so the total cash invested, guys, is $174,500. The estimated after repair value. Now, I'm thinking that this property is gonna be worth about 575 in this location which means that we are increasing the value of the property $175,000, which is fantastic. Um, now, if we go get a, if we go to refinance this property at 575,000, they will give us 80% of that, right? 80% loan to value. That's $460,000. That's the new mortgage that they're gonna give us. And once we pay off the old mortgage, 
our holding costs, our closing costs, our renovation, all these um, line items up here that you see guys, we will have $34,500 left in the deal. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. It's not looking like a 100% bird, but it's looking pretty damn close. Um, before we get into the expenses, actually, yeah, we'll, we'll do the expenses now. So insurance on something like this, I'm gonna say 125 bucks a month. Um, maintenance, 5%, this will get uh, populated once I fill out the rents up here. The gas bill for this place, it's one single, single gas furnace. You know what, let's be conservative. I'll leave it at 75 bucks. Um, hydro and water for two families. To be honest, I'm gonna say 150 bucks. And vacancy will also get pre-populated once I put in the rents. Okay, so now, what do we think we can get for a main floor three bedroom? Now, my realtor is telling me that I should be able to get 1800 bucks for the main floor three bedroom. To be honest, I know I can get more than that, but let's be super conservative and see where these numbers come in at. And he says for the two bedroom in the basement, 1500. I think I can get more like 2000 up upstairs and for the basement, 1500, 1600 is probably in line with what I think you can get there. Um, so, Ooh, what is going on here? Why is our cash flow? Oh, we got to change the new mortgage monthly pay or the new monthly payment for the mortgage. So new mortgage payment, estimated monthly rent. Okay, so we need to now find out the new mortgage amount, which is 460. We need to find out what the payment is on that 460. At the same interest rate, it's 18.14 a month. I was a little confused there for a second. 18.14 a month is our new mortgage payment because we're now borrowing 460,000 compared to the 320,000 that we were borrowing. And what that shows us or what that does here, guys, is it gives us a grand total of $637 a month in cash flow. So, this is what I do. I go $637 a month in cash flow, multiply that by 12 to get our annual cash flow. It's actually right there on the spreadsheet. I could have just done that. But, anyways, I like to use the calculator. Um, so, we're going to make $7,600 a year in cash flow, and we have $34,500 invested in the property. So, why don't we just divide this cash flow by our capital that is currently stuck in the deal invested and that equals guys a 22 percent cash on cash return on investment so that right there is fantastic um very conservative as well right if i change the rental rates to the two thousand bucks that i think that i can actually get there the cash flow gets bumped up to 821 which is 98.52 a year divided by the 34.50 or 34,500. Now we're up to a 28 and a half percent cash on cash return on investment. So we're looking on a low end, super conservative, over 20%, and more on the higher end, a 28% cash on cash. This is not including the principal pay down on the property. That's going to jack up your. Um, your return even more and that also doesn't include any return on investment now let's we haven't even talked about the equity that you also have in the deal so if the property is worth 575 and your new mortgage is right let's let's do this together so if your if your property is worth five hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and your mortgage on the property is only 460,000 because you're only doing 20% loan to value. That means that you have 20% equity still in the property, guys. So there's $115,000 of equity in the property still, and only 34,500 of that is your money. So if we subtract that, 
you have instantly made yourself $80,000 and the property is going to cash flow 800 bucks a month for the rest of time as long as you just have the two families living in it. So that is absolutely incre incredible, guys. Um, extremely, extremely um, easy way to grow your wealth. Sorry, guys. Easy way to grow your wealth. Uh, this is how you create generational wealth. This is how you create passive income. This is how you recycle your capital over and over and over again. You get into deals like this um, and you refinance and you get into another one and you refinance and you get into another one. Just rinse and repeat until you have a sizable enough cash flow that you can retire or you've got enough equity in these properties that you know eventually you refinance these a couple years down the road, two years down the road, five years. You start pulling out that $100,000 of equity. Um, you've got five, 10 of these things on the go. Each one you're pulling out 100 grand from here, 200 grand from there, and then you start private lending that money or you start putting that money into stocks, your TFSAs. Like this is how you retire young, guys. Um, you know, you just do 10 of these properties and you wait 10 years and you pull out a million plus dollars and you still hold on to the properties. That's when you're in a position where you start lending it out, you start making 10, 12 plus thousand dollars a month completely passively with cash flow. Um, I know I'm getting all crazy here, guys, but this is exactly what I'm doing. This is how I plan on retiring in the next couple of years. And um, I mean, this is the blueprint, guys. Like I just laid out the keys or the, you know, the secrets of the game for you. So please do me a favor, smash that like button. Um, I'm going to wrap up the video here because I think you guys have seen everything you need to see and stay tuned. I'll let you know if I buy this property or not. If you're interested in deals like this, interested in partnering in deals like this, please reach out to me. You can hit me up on Instagram, Josh Doyle Invest, Facebook, Josh Doyle, or leave a comment uh, below guys and I'll send you my email and let's connect. Let's chat about partnering. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, have a good one.